Hi class, welcome to the chapter 13 lecture notes lecture. As you can see, uh, the title of this chapter is the repeated measures analysis of variance. Uh, first thing that you should see right off the bat is that uh, in this chapter, we're gonna continue to talk about calculating an, an ANOVA. Um, what you may want to be just be seeing and realizing is that this time we're going to calculate a certain type of ANOVA. So let me give you the logic uh, behind that type of ANOVA that we're going to calculate. Um, so the idea is that uh, we've been going over this type of inferential analysis for a few chapters now. And we can say that we started by going over the different kinds of t-tests, right? And um, when we did that, we learned about two different kinds of t-tests, uh, the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. Let's just remember that the independent samples was from chapter 10 and the paired was from chapter 11. From there, remember that uh, the independent samples t-test consisted of us collecting two different groups, right? And the reason why this t-test is called the independent samples is those two groups are treated independently. Uh, for instance, we'll give an independent variable to one group and we won't give it to the other group, right? The other group will be like control group. Then we'll compare, okay, well, how does that influence the uh, two different groups' behaviors? Okay, um, let's, also remember, let's also remember that when we talked about the paired samples t-test, uh, with that, there were two different kinds of paired samples t-tests. There uh, was the repeated measures t-test, Right, and oh, well, let's first remember that um, for each one of these, um, you, want to, you want to remember how many groups of participants you collected. Remember, this one is called the repeated measures t-test. And with this, you collected one group of participants and you exposed that participant, that one group, to both the control condition and the independent little variable condition. And you compared how that one group did under the two different conditions. Uh, the other type of paired samples t-test was the matched one. And this one was um, where you collected two different groups, but remember the matching was when you recruited participants out of the population, you recruited a pair at a time, and from that pair, you put one participant in one group and the other participant in the other group. Okay, uh, so from there then, let's just kind of remember that in chapter 12, we learned about this new type of group comparison. Right, the new type of group comparison was before. Here it was either two groups or one group. Now the comparison is where you're comparing more than two groups to each other. Uh, in chapter 12, the type of ANOVA that we learned about, we can think of as an independent samples ANOVA. Same logic, same idea as the independent samples t-test. And the reason why these two things are basically the same is um, you collected different groups and you did different things to the members of each group. Uh, the example with the ANOVA was we were testing the different kinds of punishment. Uh, one group got the, what was it, the timeout, the other group got the, the chancla, and, the, and then the third group got the, the shock. Right? We wanted to see um, which type of punishment was more effective. Okay, uh, from there, let's also remember then the kinds of nicknames that we gave to each of these kinds of tests. Uh, when we talked about the independent samples t-test design, where we were testing the two groups, the nickname that we had for that kind of analysis <laughs> um, the nickname for that kind of analysis 
I'm trying to fix my camera here. Uh, I'm just gonna put it like this. The, the nickname for this type of analysis was the between groups analysis, right? The reason why this was called the between groups analysis was because you were doing an analysis between one group and the other group. Over here, the AKA that we had for uh, basically the, the paired samples was the within group analysis, right? And the reason why this one was called the within group analysis was because uh, of this logic, this repeated measure design, we're exposing that one group to both conditions. And so you're seeing how that one group changes across the two conditions, hence the term within group. Okay, so then when you come over here to think about um, the ANOVA and the independent sample design, we can recognize that this has an AKA as well. Um, it's going to be one of these two AKAs. I'm just going to ask you if you think you know which one of the two AKAs it's going to be. Hopefully you said that it's going to be this one, uh, the um, independent samples, right? So it's, uh, it's AKA. So that they got the same logic that's going on here. So then this AKA is also a between groups analysis, right? Remember um, with this, the analysis was the group that got the, um, the, the, the timeout versus the chancla versus the shock, right? That was the comparison that you were doing between the different groups. Okay, so now how are things changing then from chapter 12 to chapter 13? Well, the way that things are changing is that um, we're moving from a independent samples ANOVA to now this repeated measures ANOVA, right? So kind of like uh, moving from here to here, but in terms of ANOVAs instead. So with that, uh, we could then say, okay, now we're talking about this type of ANOVA, right? The repeated measures analysis of variance. Um, let's just make sure that we understand that now we're talking about uh, paired samples analysis, right? But instead of it being with one or two groups, it's with more than two groups. Okay, so in this analysis, uh, remember the big thing that we're solving for is F. Um, the F equation this time is going to be made up of these two different kinds of mean squares, uh, mean squares between treatments over mean squares error. Let's just uh, go back real quick with that and remember how the F, or what it consisted of in the chapter 12 ANOVA. Remember that the, the F that we had over here was this thing called BTV in the numerator and WTV in the, in the denominator. What is BTV? It is, uh, we, we've been referring to as between treatments variance, and the WTV is the within treatments variance. Okay, uh, so from here, uh, you've probably noticed that I've got this big diagram down here. I want to use this big diagram to explain the logic now of the repeated measures analysis of variance. We can say that um, in my explanation, I'm first going to uh, explain how this diagram shows the what we did with the chapter 11 ANOVA, right? Uh, just like I, I'd already set up here, that ANOVA consisted of F equals between treatments variance over within treatments variance. The thing that we want to have a sense of, right? Uh, just kind of reviewing chapter 11, I think we want to have a sense of, oh man, I, I wasn't looking. Um, let me see if I can scoot this over. No, I can't, okay, I'm just gonna 
leave it like this. Um, there we go. Okay, so here we're saying, for the chapter 11 and over, uh, this F equation is being explained in this diagram here. Um, the F equation is made up of this numerator BTV and the denominator WTV. What are those two things? Uh, those two things are actually this right here, the between treatments variance, right? So that this box is the numerator for that F equation. And then it's also made up of the within treatment variance, right? Um, this WTV is the denominator of the chapter 11 F uh, ratio. Thing that we want to remember is what was that kind of variance and what was that kind of variance. So just just real quickly, uh, let's, this is the heart of uh, well, the chapter 11 lecture notes, but just to remind you, um, we had different kinds of variance within each of these two types. Uh, and the different kinds that we had were the systematic versus the unsystematic variance. For instance, remember that in the between treatments variance, we had these two types of uh, variance here. Uh, number one was referred to, referred to as treatment effect, right? Treatment effect, remember, is um, how the independent variable, how the thing that you did to your participants affected that participant. And we refer to that effect as systematic variance. Right, it was systematic in the sense that you systematically applied your independent variable to the participants, and then you systematically didn't apply it to like another group of participants, and you compared uh, how the two groups did compared to each other, right? So if there was a difference between the two groups, it was a systematic difference because you systematically caused it to occur. Remember that in this type of variance, there was this other kind of variance though, and the other kind of variance was called unsystematic. What was unsystematic variance? Uh, that would have been differences uh, that would have been um, not due to anything that the researcher did, but just differences that exist uh, randomly, right? Because they existed randomly, they were unsystematic. Okay, um, one other thing that I should explain here is um, beyond the two kinds of variants that are present, um, what is happening? How did we get the scores for this box? And how did we get the scores for this box? Right, so the way that we got the scores for this box is we went to our group's participants and for each group, we calculated a sample mean, right? So then for every other group, we calculated another sample mean, right? And, uh, and in terms of the ANOVA, we're talking about three different sample means. Right, the group that got the the timeout, the chocolate, and the punishment. We're saying uh, what was the average amount of like bad behavior that occurred after or, or during uh, the imposition of punishment. The other thing that we're looking at is if um, here the different scores are from one group to another group. What are the different scores over here? Remember, the different scores over here are now where you're going within a treatment, right? So you're going within a group, and you're looking at each individual's raw score in that group, and you're subtracting that raw score from the mean of the group that that raw score belongs to, hence the term within treatment variance, right? And we said that um, the kind of... In chapter 11, we said that the type of variance that was present here was just simply that unsystematic variance, right? So um, the way that you guys want to see uh, the logic of this ratio then, or, or this, uh, this uh, 
this, equa this equation is that the numerator is that difference between the groups, right? So that difference that's due to the treatment. The denominator is just that difference that exists within the group that isn't due to the treatment. And so what this F equation is looking at is if you have these two different kinds of variants here, which is the larger variance? And we want, right, if we want to say that our treatment is effective, that there is a treatment that's effective, we want for the numerator, its variance to be bigger than the variance on the denominator. Okay. Uh, so one thing that we want to see with that then is uh, when we look at these, these two uh, mathematical expressions, what we're asking is, um, with that expression, does that expression equal zero? Right? If it, if it does equal zero, that, and that means that there's no difference between the different groups, um, there was no different effect of the different treatments if it's zero. If it's something other than zero, then that's saying, oh, oh wait, uh, one mean is different from the other means. There might be an effect then of a, tre of a treatment. Here, we're asking, is uh, this going to equal zero? Right, we're going back to that idea. We're asking not about the treatment, but just is an individual par participant different from the rest of the group? Everybody in the group got the same treatment. So if the uh, participant in here is different from the group, it's going to be due to some other uh, reason than the exposure to the treatment. Okay, so now uh, in chapter 12, what we want to do is we want to start to get a better sense. Let me just put uh, that we're now starting to talk about the chapter 12 ANOVA. And a big thing that we want to, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, shoot, I screwed this up. Here, sorry, I wasn't talking about the chapter 11 ANOVA. Chapter 11 was the t-test. Here, here I was talking about the chapter 12 ANOVA. Right, so here and here, I'm talking about this chapter, I'm talking about the chapter 13 ANOVA, this ANOVA. Okay, so with this ANOVA, right, um, we're still going to do all this stuff, but now we're going to add a new component. And the new component that we're going to add is, in chapter 13, we're now going to dig further into this unsystematic error in the within treatment variance. And we're going to uh, try to tease out different types of insystematic error that will exist here. Right? And those two types are, are this one and this two here. One type of unsystematic error that can exist is this thing called individual differences. What's meant by individual differences? Uh, these would be differences that occur between the participant and the group that would be due to things referred to as uh, demographic differences. It's called demographic diffs. Sorry, I'm trying to demographic differences, right? And these would be things like um, differences between in the group that would occur because of things like maybe. Uh, sex, right? Maybe some participants are men, some participants are, are women, and so they're going to have different scores because of those kinds of things. Or maybe ethnicity, right? The participants are, have different ethnic backgrounds, so it's going to cause them to be different in different ways. Um, maybe another demographic difference could be what's referred to as uh, SES. Uh, this is socioeconomic status, right? It's basically referring to are you uh, poor, middle class, or rich, right? But you could be, in this analysis, you could be different from the group based on where you fall in, in one of these categories, right? So the, if uh, that does happen, then that's going to be referred to as a type of unsystematic uh, variance referred to as individual differences. In there, there's this second type of um, within treatment variance. 
it's called other error. And basically other error is this stuff here. Um, it, well, uh, I guess I should say it's, um, this is any error that, uh, what's the error that is reasonable to expect, right? Under like normal conditions, it's just gonna be like the normal everyday error that you uh, would have. Uh, an example of something like this would be like, say you as an individual, you go take an IQ test on Monday and then you go and take that same IQ test on Tuesday, right? You may not score exactly the same as you did on Monday, the way you did on Tuesday. Uh, it's not gonna mean that you're different in smarts on Monday or on Tuesday. It's more just gonna refer to that there was just some small differences present that day, right? So that's the kind of error that we're talking about. Okay, okay, so in the chapter 13, ANOVA, we can say um, that we're still calculating somewhat of that kind of F that we had in chapter 12. Right, so we're still calculating this one that consisted of the between variance uh, over the within treatment variance. Now, in chapter 13, the way the F's going to look is we'll still be calculating the same uh, numerator. We're still going after that between treatment variance. The thing that's going to be different in this chapter is now the denominator is no longer, no longer going to be this with treat, within treatment variance. Now it's gonna be a uh, type of variance referred to as error variance. What is error variance? It is this kind of variance that I was uh, referring to er earlier, right? Um, it is that variance that has had that individual differences removed from it. And it's variance that just consists of this error that's reasonable to expect. Right, so basically uh, what we've done in the chapter 13 in OVA is we've still calculated between treatments variance, but now uh, when we go to calculate our within treatments variance, we basically uh, do a subtraction problem here. And the subtraction problem is that we remove the individual variance and just keep that other error, this error variance, right? And that becomes that denominator of the F equation for the chapter 13 ANOVA. Okay, so it's the logic of how you have done all of this. Let me just see if I can give you a last look at everything here. Make sure we got all this in. Okay, okay. So uh, from there, I'm now going to uh, go ahead and show you how we calculate this uh, chapter 13 ANOVA. Start by laying our sheet down here. Not sure why. I'm not really liking this camera position, so I'm just going to try to fix it real fast. Please bear with me. Okay, uh, so to begin with, right, so now basically uh, saying that we're gonna um, see how to do like steps one through four now of uh, this repeated measures ANOVA. To begin with though, uh, we have to take a look at how the data is gonna be set up. Right, so here is a repeated measures ANOVA table. Um, let's go over the different parts beginning with the different columns that we have here. The first column is your student column. Uh, this is basically your column showing the different participants that you had in the study. The participants in this study are being referred to uh, by different letters. Let's see if I can fix my phone here. I feel like it's just leaning weird. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it. 
Okay. Uh, so then let's look at if uh, that first column was just your column participants. Um, the next three columns are your uh, three columns of treatments. So I'm going to call the first one treatment one, the second one treatment two, and the third one treatment three. Right, so we have these three conditions called reread, uh, answer prepared questions, and create and answer questions. Uh, what's happening in this experiment is um, some students are having to uh, use one of three different study techniques and uh, to like study something, and then they're gonna take a test, and this is the score of how they did it on the test. What the test is asking is, is there a significant difference uh, between the three different types of study techniques? Right, so uh, if we just look at the scores, just kind of eyeball on what you're seeing, we just see that um, there is an order of effects, right? If uh, uh, getting a good score on the test uh, means getting a high score on the test, of the three columns that we have here, it looks like treatment three has the highest set of scores. Um, Treatment two has the medium or the, the middle set of scores, and treatment one has the lowest set of scores. Uh, we can verify that by looking at the means of the three different groups, right? And that's um, being shown with these M's here. Remember the way that I show these is with these different X bars. Right, uh, so right off the bat, you're seeing that it looks like in this experiment, there was a significant difference uh, in terms of effect. And the significant difference is that it looks like at least these two groups are significantly different from each other, right? That's your highest scoring group. That's your lowest scoring group. Looks like there's a big spread in, there, in, those, in that difference. The big question that I'm going to have um, in this NOVA is... Um, if we do find significance with the F, right, then we'll have to do like that post hoc test to see where the significance is. I'm going to be wondering if either of these two treatments are significantly different from that treatment. Okay, uh, so what else do we see on this graph? Um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at this fifth column that we have. Uh, it's called the person totals column. And this is the new column that's unique to this chapter, right? So this is like the chapter 13 piece of information. Uh, we have here is a, three, a thing called P for each participant. What is P? Uh, hopefully you're seeing that it is the sum of the scores of each participant um, in, per, in each row, right? So. Uh, here, P was 15. 15 is gotten by adding 2, 5, and 8. Okay, uh, what other scores do we see here? Um, we see N's, right? What is N? Remember, N is uh, how many participants there were in the group. We also have K. K was uh, how many treatments were there in the experiment. We have capital N. Here, I kind of want to know, capital N is going to be showing an interesting thing, right? Remember, this is a repeated measure design. So the total number of participants that you have in this experiment are six participants. But here it's seeing that you have this capital N of 18. Now I'm going to get in that N, capital N of 18. I'm taking each participant and I'm getting three different scores for that participant, right? So that means six times three that's how we got the 18. Then we have G, uh, if I remember correctly, G is the, I wanna say it's the sum of your T's here, right? Is that correct? Let's say uh, we have 84 plus 60, it sounds like that is 144, right? So if G is the sum of your T's, we wanna remember, well, what's T? T, remember, is for each group, it is that group's sum of X. It's that group's sum of raw scores. Okay, um, other than that, you also have this sum of X squared. Let's remember what that is. Uh, basically, for each one of the X's, you had to create a X squared column 
and you had to get all the different x squared values and add them up. Once you did all that, uh, you would have gotten 1,324. From there, let's just remember that uh, we can calculate a sum of squares value for each uh, treatment, and that's what those different scores are. Okay, so uh, so now that we see what we're doing on the table, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the different equations that we're going to have. Actually, uh, let me just kind of show you how many equations we're going to do to begin with, right? Uh, it's going to be uh, quite a quite a few. And, and I just kind of want to note um, how we're going to organize these. I came up with a shorthand list of, of all the different equations. And it looks like the, the way that they're organized is first, we're going to do them in terms of two stages. Right? A stage one and a stage two. The stage one set of equations is going to be three major chunks of equations. The first major chunk is where we're going to calculate for total. We're going to get a sum of squares total and a degrees of freedom total. Just know uh, somewhere along the way I may abbreviate those terms. Once we've got the total information, then we'll get uh, information about within treatment. Uh, we're going to get a sum of squares within treatment score and a degrees of freedom within treatment score. From there, then we'll go to a sum of squares between treatment and the degrees of freedom between treatment score. Once we have that, then we're going to move into uh, what will be thought of as stage two. In stage two, we're going to get what we're going to refer to as sum of squares between subjects and degrees of freedom between subjects. One thing that you're going to want to do is uh, keep this set of scores separate from this set of scores, but you make sure that you see both sets start with between, but this is between treatment and this is between subjects, right? So make sure you keep those two straight. After that, you're going to calculate some of the squares error, degrees of freedom error, and then your two MS values, your two mean squares values between treatments and uh, mean squares error. Then remember that you're going to use F to um, do your final calculation, and F is going to consist of that mean squares between treatment over your mean squares error. Uh, the other thing that you want to remember is that um, you're going to compare that F value that you get from this to your critical value that you uh, will look up. Remember the way that you're going to get your critical value is you're going to uh, look up first your degrees of freedom between treatment and then your degrees of freedom error. Okay, so it's going to keep these as, as cheat sheets, but let's walk through each one of these formulas together. Beginning with, oh, let's start. Let's actually start with the the step one, uh, the hypothesis statement. Okay, so it's uh, more or less the same hypothesis statement that you had uh, in the chapter twelve ANOVA. You're still saying that you're comparing the population means of uh, the three different groups that you're uh, using. And your null hypothesis is saying that there's going to be no difference between the three different means. Your alternative hypothesis is saying that there's going to be at least one uh, difference between, uh, at least, uh, between the three means. From there, we can move on to step two. This is where uh, we're going to... First, start with our stage one set of equations, right? So first, uh, this set of equations. Our first that we said we we're going to get is that sum of squares total. The way that we're going to do it is the equation is made up of these values here, right? So the sum of x squared minus g squared over uh, your capital N. That gives you... That 1,324 minus 2,000, uh, or I'm sorry, 20,736. What is that? That's this G or this 144 squared over your capital N, which we said was 18. Right? And then it ends up giving you this 172. 
Uh, the way that you get the degrees of freedom total here is just simply um, your capital N minus one, which gives you 17. From there, uh, the second set of equations is the sum of squares within treatment. First, we'll say that the way you're going to get it is we're going to go and we're going to find all of your sum of squares inside and sum them up. What do I mean by the sum of squares inside? That's these individual sum of squares there, right? So we said 24 plus 34 plus 30 equals 88. So it's that sum of squares. And then the degrees of freedom that went with it, we said was the degrees of freedom within treatment, the way that we get it, is gonna be the sum of degrees of freedom inside. Right, and so that was, um, I'm saying uh, three fives here because your n was six, right? So degrees of freedom, n minus one, five plus five plus five, and that's going to be degrees of freedom of 15. From there, we move on to our third set of equations, the uh, sum of squares between treatment. This one's kind of a doozy. Uh, what we have here is, we'll say, this equation, where in uh, the first fraction, you are going to find a bunch of these uh, t-squared equations. You're going to take those and you're going to sum those up. Well, what are those equations? It's basically, um, you're going to take each one of your t's that you have up here, you're going to square it, and you're going to put over its samples n. Then you're going to minus that, right? Whatever that sum is, you're going to minus it from g squared over uh, a capital N. So that ends up being uh, this equation over here, where I got 30 squared over 6. Is that 30 squared over 6? 54 squared, 60 squared, minus that 144 squared. So it ends up giving me um, this when everything, all the fractions are reduced. And then I ended up with a sum of squares between treatment value of 84. Let's just note that the degrees of freedom for this is uh, k minus 1, which gives me 2. Okay, uh, from there, we'll say that we have now completed all of the stage 1 equations. We're going to move on to the stage 2 equations. And we are beginning with the sum of squares between subjects. Okay, so just to note, um, that is now that equation there. Where you're going to again, you're going to again go find a bunch of fractions and then sum them up. This time where the fractions are that you're going to sum up, though, is going to be, remember those P's you had in the P column? You're going to take each one of these and make a fraction out of it now. And it's going to be a uh, fraction where it's going to be P squared over K. Once you've summed up all those values, then you're going to subtract that uh, from your uh, G squared over N. Now, I'll just, I'll just say that in... Um, Tonight's lecture notes, I'm not going to make you do that equation. But you probably will have to do it in your odds probs and your evens probs. So I'm just going to give you a glance at what the equation looks like. Right now, remember, you don't have to do this. I just want you to see what you would do when you do have to do it. So remember, uh, this is the equation. Right, and I'm saying that I'm first setting it up by getting all those p squareds over k's that I have to sum up, taking all of them, uh, putting my square above them, and I'm saying that uh, they're also above their k's, which is three. Then I'm uh, making sure I remember what my uh, g squared over capital N was. Then from there, I first square all my numerators, even the one over here. Then I reduce my fractions, 
and then I uh, add everything up here, subtract that from, uh, or subtract this from what I've added up, and I'm getting 66. Okay, so that's how you'll do that equation. Remember, you don't have to do it for this set of lecture notes. But uh, also know that what this equation does is it measures differences between subjects, right? So when we were talking about um, earlier, we were talking about removing some variance, that between subjects variance, this is where we are getting what we're going to remove. Okay, uh, from there, we also need to calculate the degrees of freedom between subjects. The way that we get it is n minus 1. Uh, here it's uh, uh, 6 minus 1 because there were 6 people in each group. The second set of equations in, step, in stage 2 are now where we go for uh, our error. First, sum of squares error is where we find our sum of squares within treatment, and we subtract from it the sum of squares between subjects. R remember that these are two values that you already calculated earlier. Right, you've gotten that sum of squares uh, within treatment earlier, and you've also gotten that sum of squares uh, between subjects up here. Okay, so uh, it ends up being 88 minus 66 uh, equals 22. You also need to calculate degrees from freedom of error for this. And it's going to be your degrees of freedom within treatment minus your degrees of freedom uh, between subjects, right? So the degrees of freedom for each of those. Ends up giving you a degrees of freedom of 10. But then we are saying, right, so we are now in our stage two. We're saying that we now have just finished um, calculating all of our sum of squares values. I'm just going to know what all sum of squares values we did get, right? So we got a sum of squares total, sum of squares within treatment, between treatment, between subjects, and error. How many sum of squares is that? That's one, two, three, four, five. Wow. Now what we're going to do is uh, calculate our two mean squares values. First, we're going to calculate our mean squares between treatment. And it's just simply going to be that sum of squares between treatment divided by degrees of freedom between treatment. That was 84 divided by 2, which gives you 42. And then we're going to calculate that mean squares error. It's your sum of squares error divided by degrees of freedom error, which is 22 over 10, gives you 2.2. Then remember, after you've calculated your two mean squares, you're going to use those mean squares values to then calculate your F. Your F, we're saying, is 19.09. Uh, the way that I calculated F, remember, mean squares between or uh, mean squares error. The way that I uh, went about getting my critical value for this, right, uh, I need to Find degrees of freedom. What's my degrees of freedom going to consist of? My degrees of freedom between treatment and my degrees of freedom of error. So that's 2 and 10. So then I'm going to look them up. I'm going to go to my F table. There's my 2 column, my 10 column. And so my critical value is going to be 4.10. That's what we have here already. The F that we calculated is bigger than the critical value, so then we're going to decide to reject the null hypothesis. Let's just note uh, there was one other equation that we needed to do, and that was where we uh, found that we did have a significant effect. We want to know, okay, since we did have an effect, how big of an effect it was. Remember the way that we're now calculating that is uh, with what we used to call R squared, but is now eta squared. Uh, this time the formula is made up of your sum of squares between treatment divided by your sum of squares uh, treat, uh, between treatment. Sure that's right. <laughs> oh, um, minus your sum of squares. Actually, yeah, it is just a T there. Okay, so it ends up being uh, 84 divided by 172 minus 66, 
which gives you a 0.79 or 79%. Okay, at this point, we're going to say that that's all I have for this chapter. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week.